Hi everybody, I am Net Nursing Prep and welcome to my channel. In today's video, we're going to be talking about PCOS. So let's get into it. So first of all, what does it stand for? It stands for Polycystic Ovary Syndrome. And a lot of things are happening in the body to make this happen. So first of all, the patient will have higher levels of things like estrogen, testosterone, and luteinizing hormone. They will also have decreased levels of FSH and increased levels of androgens. So if you recall, androgens are male hormones. So having a higher than um, average amount of those. That is the characteristic thing associated with PCOS. So a little timeline on how this happens. Increased androgens in the body prevent ovulation or cause irregular ovulation. And when you have irregular ovulation, that can lead to the development of cysts. So that's the name. So poly meaning a lot, cystic, so cysts. So we have a lot of cysts, where? In the ovaries. Now, I will say not everybody who has PCOS has cysts, but most people do, hence the name. So we have that cyst development occurring in the ovaries. And then what do the cysts do? they produce more estrogen, so higher levels of estrogen. This is also characterized by insulin issues. So there is insulin resistance. Increased insulin in the body leads to increased androgens in the body. So they kind of go hand in hand. And then the last thing um, is low-grade inflammation. So people who have PCOS have chronic inflammation. PCOS is one of the most common endocrine disorders seen in women of childbearing age. So risk factors for this include things like genetics. So you're more likely to have this if your mom had it or your sister has it, close relatives. Obesity, being Mexican-American, and then already having insulin resistance. Some symptoms your patient might present with, they might have all of these or just some of these, and they might have them in various levels of like severity. So maybe more mild or more severe, depending. So things like irregular periods, they say less than nine periods a year. So nine months out of a 12 month year. Weight gain or having a harder time losing weight, thinning of the hair, infertility. Now, not everybody is infertile if you have PCOS. Um, like I said, mild to severe levels of these symptoms. So some people are infertile, some people are not. You might have dark, thick patches of skin on your body. Hirsutism, which is characterized by things like acne and excessive hair growth on the body. A lot of times people with PCOS will have this. They might have like more facial hair or hair on their arms and legs, a little bit more excessive. Um, and then of course those cysts. So how is this diagnosed? First, they're going to look at these signs and symptoms. Okay, so they're going to be looking at the big one, of course, the irregular periods, and they're going to see do you have any other symptoms of PCOS that go along with it. Then they're going to want to rule out other things first. So they might do something like an ultrasound to see if you have any cysts and they might do some blood tests checking for those hormone levels and checking for like your blood glucose, your insulin, that sort of stuff. So a couple of different things to diagnose this. Our nursing interventions for patients with PCOS, the First line of defense here is going to be diet, exercise, and weight loss. So that is going to be the first thing that is recommended after you get diagnosed. Other options include things like medications to help cause ovulation. A lot of these interventions depend on the age of the patient, whether or not they want to have children, and how severe their symptoms are. So, a variety of options depending. It's very individual. So we want to have a child, we're going to do medications to cause ovulation. Birth control to help with those irregular periods. 
Sometimes they will give metformin, which you probably recognize as a diabetes medication, right? So metformin will help control insulin. And some women, once the insulin is under control, then ovulation goes back to normal and they start having regular periods because insulin was what was causing the problem. So metformin can be a big lifesaver for a lot of people. Um, other medications, ones that will block androgens, um, progestin will help regulate your period. Aldactone, this is more for like symptoms, like if you're having like acne related to this. Vanical cream is used for like excessive hair, so keeping that under control. And it's not on here, but another thing that sometimes people with PCOS do for like excessive hair, like facial hair and things, they will get something called electrolysis. So that would be a treatment that we, the nurse, would not do, but we could recommend it to them. Finally, I just wanted to add a couple of complications that could occur for people who have PCOS, and that can include things like infertility, type 2 diabetes, and they're at higher risk for certain cancers, like endometrial cancer. So that was my video on PCOS. I hope you found this helpful. Don't forget to like and subscribe. If you have any questions or comments, please let me know, and if not, I'll see you on the next one.